Over the last two years, I've built a variety of different shooting boards from some of the biggest woodworking channels on YouTube. Built Paul Sellers, built my own, which is garbage, built Rob Cosman's, and most recently, I built a variation of Mike Pekovich's. And in this video, I'm going to walk through each different shooting board style and tell you what I liked and what I didn't like about each. We'll begin with Paul Sellers' version. Paul's version features a single narrow board with a 90 and a 45 degree recess cut into it in which you can take a fence and slide it into place. Each recess is cut at an angle on the back that corresponds to an angle cut on the fence so that when you slide it in, it creates a wedging motion that locks everything into place. The first thing I liked about Paul's shooting board is that it's very accessible. You don't need any additional hardware, and you probably have the materials you need from scrap wood lying around the shop. You can very easily head out into your shop and get started building this. The second thing I liked about Paul's version was that it incorporated both a 90 and a 45 degree fence and that you could easily transition from one to the other. If you have a small shop like me, you sometimes want to get the most out of your jigs. And so having this ability to quickly transition from shooting 90 to shooting 45 degrees can be really nice. The last thing I liked about Paul's version is that the fence is easily replaceable. Over time your fence is going to wear down and you may need to replace it. Instead of having to replace the entire shooting board, you can simply just create a new fence, slide it into place, and you're good to go. Now onto what I didn't like about Paul's version. First, and I think the biggest drawback of his version from any other version, is that it requires a fair degree of skill to create an accurate shooting board. The recessed fence means that you're going to have to be able to create a perfect 90 degree dado, which if you're just starting out into hand tool woodworking, or even if you've been woodworking for a while, that can be a hard task to do. The second thing I didn't like, which kind of goes hand in hand with the first, is that there's no way to easily adjust the fence in the event that it gets out of square. Whether it gets out of square from just not making it square in the first place, or just over time the fence becoming out of square. In order to get it back into square, you're either going to have to adjust this dado, or use a rabbit plane to adjust the fence until everything gets back into square. And both of these options just aren't that easy to do. The last thing I didn't like is that if you follow Paul's plans exactly, the resulting shooting board has a very narrow surface area, which doesn't give you a lot of room to support your work. If you're using a large piece and trying to square it up, then you don't have a lot of room to have that be supported, and it just makes everything a little difficult and just not as nice to use. Overall, I wouldn't recommend building the shooting board. Now, I hate saying that because I love pulse sellers. However, because of the skill required to build the shooting board accurately, and because of the inability to adjust the fence in the event that it becomes out of square, I believe makes this shooting board style inferior to other options out there. Rob's version features a large thin sheet of plywood that's laminated onto a larger piece of the MDF that has a glued and fixed fence. Now, I really like Rob's version, and until recently, it was my go-to shooting board. One big benefit to Rob's version is its simplicity. Since the fence is fixed, you know every single time you pull it out that the board is going to be ready to use. Unlike some others where you have to adjust the fence, ensure it's square before you use it each time, Rob's version is just ready to go, which is a huge benefit in my book. The other thing I really like about Rob's version is the size. The width is just right to support your work, but not so large that it makes the whole thing cumbersome. And the length is just right as well. Something I don't think that gets talked a lot about in shooting boards is the length. Having a longer shooting board means that you can square the edge of boards as well. Now I work on a lot of smaller pieces that have thin stock, and it can be hard to square the edge of that thin stock with a hand plane alone. However, with this larger shooting board, I'm able to square those thin the edge of the thin stock very easily. So overall, I think Rob nailed it with the size of the shooting board. Now for what I don't like. You may be able to guess, but that's the fixed fence, and this would be true of any fixed fence style shooting board. I think a fixed fence can lead to kind of two problems. First is that you may secure it at a square. Now by no means is it impossible to secure this fence properly so that it's square. However, I think it is something to consider that there is a challenge in having to glue, clamp, and do this all while keeping it square. And the second thing is if you secure this out of square, or if over time it just gets out of square, the only way you can get it back into square is to use a rabbit plane to plane down the fence until it's square once again. Now, a rabbit plane is a specialty plane, and if you're like me, you may not have one, or if you're just starting out in woodworking, you may not have one either, and so you'll be left with a shooting board that's now out of square and isn't going to be much good to you. 
Obviously, if you do have a route plane, this isn't a big deal, and so a fixed fence may be the right option for you. So overall, I think Rob's version is amazing, and if you are able to secure this in place square, or have the ability to ensure that your fence gets squared once it's affixed, then I think this is a great option, and would highly recommend making it. The last style I want to look at is those shooting boards that have an adjustable fence. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to talk about this version, which I made and have video detailing, that's a combination of Rob's and Mike Pekovich's versions. This version features a large sheet of half-inch plywood laminated onto 3 quarter inch MDF. And the fence is fixed with a single screw on one side, and on the other side there's a threaded insert with an oversized hole in which a star knob can be put in and secured down to fix the fence in place. The biggest draw for me to this design was the ability to easily ensure the fence was square before each use. The single pivot point and oversized hole means that I can place my plane along the edge, place a square against my plane, ensure the fence is square, and then just simply lock everything in place. The second thing I like about this version is the ability to easily replace the fence. And this would be true of most adjustable fence style shooting boards. Over time, the fence might get damaged, and having the ability to just easily swap in a new fence is a big plus in my book. Now for what I don't like. Any adjustable fence style shooting board is probably going to require additional hardware. And going out and buying additional hardware maybe isn't something you want to mess with. And although it's probably relatively cheap on the hardware side, you may still be on a pretty tight budget and don't want to fork out extra cash for the additional hardware. The second thing I don't like about adjustable fence is ironically the thing I like most and that is the adjustable fence itself. When you have an adjustable fence, it means you have to take into account two different things. First, you're going to have to take into account that every time you pull it out, you're going to have to take the extra time to ensure it's square. Whereas with a fixed fence, you'd be able to just take it out and begin using it right away. Second is that an adjustable fence means that over time as you're using it in a period or a session or a time, that it could get out of square. This means that as you're working, you're going to have to keep in the back of your mind that you may need to check periodically to ensure that everything is square. Obviously this could lead to problems where you're going along and you're shooting and you're shooting things out of square without even realizing it, that you're doing that because the fence has become out of square. That can be a big, big problem if you're not careful. Overall, I think this is a great design. And if you're like me and have struggled to get a fence square, then building an adjustable fence styled shooting board could be the way to go for you. So which shooting board style is the best shooting board style? I actually think that's the wrong question. I think the better question is to think about what you need and want from a shooting board and then pick the shooting board that's going to best fit those needs. So are you somebody that just wants an all pure wood option? Pick Paul Sellers. Are you somebody that wants a shooting board that's ready to go the moment you bring it out? Pick a fixed fence like Rob Cosman's. Are you somebody that struggles to get a shooting board that's square? Then pick an adjustable fence style where you can ensure it's square before each use. Regardless of what you do, I think the important thing is to think about the pros and cons of each shooting board and then pick the one that's going to best suit your needs. And I hope this video has been helpful in you doing that. So if you like this video, then you might like this series where I build a bunch of hand tools to build a piece of furniture.